What's up, NBA fans? What's up, all sports fans? This your boy, JB, host of the Behind the Bench podcast network and channel. Just want to give a shout out to the rest of the crew. I'm talking about Shy Kevin and Jermaine, Kobe Bryant Film Room, and Big Dog Talk Sports. That's right. That's right. That's the crew. That's the crew. And for everyone who's tuning in, we hope that you support Behind the Bench, become a subscriber, and help make the show the best that it can be. And let's talk some NBA action from last night as the uh, Los Angeles Lakers, they took on the Houston Rockets on the road. And historically, <laughs> the Houston Rockets have always posed trouble for the uh, Lakers. This goes back to the Showtime years in the 80s through the 90s, 2000s, uh, you know, during the uh, Kobe Powell years. They've always been a nemesis, so this is really nothing new, but the stakes are higher considering, you know, what the Lakers have relinquished in order to pursue an all-time win-now scenario. And what's funny is the Houston Rockets have improved as a team from the past couple of seasons with the additions of free agent uh, Dylan Brooks, Fred Van Vliet, along with uh, Jeff Green, who was on the Denver Nuggets team last year who won the championship. And we've seen the improvement of their starting center, Alper and Sangoon. But the key last night and the Houston Rockets victory, they went on to beat the Lakers, and they was beating them pretty bad last, last night. They was beating them by as much as 30 points before they let up in the end, and, and the score looks a, a lot better than <laughs> what it really was uh, during the heat of battle. Uh, the score, the final score last night between these two teams was 135 to 119. Houston Rockets prevailed. Well, not prevailed, but they one in resounding fashion. But I believe the main key last night was the play of uh, Jalen Green. Uh, in the previous uh, contest earlier this season between these two teams, he did not play well. Uh, but he uh, stepped up big time last night and scoring 34 points, 12 rebounds, and 7 assists. And then Alper and Sangoon, 31 points, 12 rebounds, 7 assists. So they essentially <laughs> produced the same uh, statistical uh, outcome. But Dylan Brooks has been a very positive uh, presence on their team. His uh, uh, grit and toughness, <clears throat> it, uh, it carries it carries in a big way. And then uh, Jabari Smith Jr. Uh, tallied 18 points, 9 rebounds, 4 assists. And then uh, reserve... Cam Whitmore, he came through big last night with 20 points and uh, six assists. But uh, that team is better. That team is better. And that they now uh, stand with a 22 and 24 record in the uh, Western Conference. And as far as the Lakers production last night, you had uh, Anthony Davis with 23 points, seven rebounds, two assists. Uh, LeBron James with 23 points, six rebounds, 10 assists. D'Angelo Russell with 23 points, uh, one rebound, five assists. Rui Huchimura, 16 points, five rebounds, one assist. But what's unfortunate is, and this is the stone cold reality. It's been proven over the past 15 years, this is really nothing new, but it always comes across as a shock when you really try to point it out on a consistent basis. The system that LeBron James um, incorporates on the team, someone, particularly in that starting five, their game is gonna take a hit. And the player that was most impacted by the LBJ system, the driving kick was Austin Reeves. 
And now, you know, you hear fans and uh, or talking heads clamoring for Austin Reeves to be traded. And it's just this repetitive cycle, man. And, and the fundamental problem with the team is that the league has stepped up. The league has passed the Lakers by. And when you try to convey the notion that the Lakers mortgage their future away for the decade, it's, it seems like it's either fans want to it's more of a denial than anything. And it's the reality is staring and red in the face. It's staring it's staring red at them because of the standings. Now this team is twenty four and twenty four. Now mind you, uh the season is forty eight games in with thirty four games to go. But considering what the experts said about the off-season uh, moves leading into this season, you would think that the Lakers were title-bound. Because essentially they said the Lakers had the best off-season of any team in the league and the best off-season ever. And as I said, it shouldn't be based on the fact that a team signs eight or nine free agents. That's, that, that is a warning sign right there. That's a, that is a that should be cause for concern. That that should be uh, uh, it shouldn't be something to to celebrate, you know, and you know, almost fifty games in, and, and the team is basically where they were last year, and the team is basically where they were two years ago. And as I keep saying, and <laughs> the reality is they cannot compensate for the real young core that they were led to relinquish to pursue that one season of success in 2020 that resulted in a bubble <laughs> uh I mean, it is what it is, man. I mean, I hate to break it down like that, but, you know, I wish the franchise didn't take this route because the handwriting was on the wall considering uh, how the landscape of the NBA was uh, evolving. And now we see a situation where you, if you look at that Western Conference, there's no way this team is gonna, going to uh, crack through the top four uh, seeds. That's pretty much, for the most part, on lock. Uh, um, Minnesota, OKC, the uh, defending champion, Denver Nuggets, who won a big game at home versus the Milwaukee Bucks. And then you got the Clippers uh, comfortably at the fourth seed. And then you have uh, Phoenix. Or oh, Sacramento is really starting to play some good basketball as of late. I believe they are in fifth place. And then you have Phoenix. Uh, Dallas and New Orleans are tied for seventh, eighth place. Uh, the Pelicans, uh, I believe their main issue really is understanding their role like you know who's going to be the, the number one guy number two guy down the stretch i believe that's their conflict right now um but uh dallas you figure luca can get them to the playoffs so it's going to be so tight somebody's not going to make it man somebody's not going to make it and when you consider where, where the lakers stand you know where they always in need of constant trades well that's the problem right there you can't keep on you know uh trading uh you know, 40% of the roster every year. It's not going to work. And the reason that they find themselves having to do that is, number one, pressure put on by that guy to always make a move whenever the team hits a snag. But <laughs> I, the irony is the system itself is the snag. The system itself is the snag. And, 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 and in this Western Conference, it, it becomes even more glaring. It becomes even more glaring. And if the Lakers don't make the playoffs this year, they have to put it into this. And uh, fans going to have to realize, man, you know, you can't go down this route again. You cannot relinquish your young talent. What I mean the young talent, I'm not talking about the talent they 
that have on the team over the past couple years or the young players. I'm not talking about Dennis Schroeders. I'm not talking about Kendrick Nunn's. I'm not talking about those players. Uh, Max Christie is just starting out. Hopefully he don't get traded. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it wouldn't surprise me one bit. You know, uh, pressure's being put on to trade Austin Reeves. I think considering uh, 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 the situation, uh, the fact that he was an undrafted player, I think Austin Reeves is really uh, excelling as a player individually. You know, to where if he was, you know, if he was part of, uh, of the team that, should be representing the Lakers, uh, they would see, they would focus more on his positive attributes rather than his so-called negative attributes as a player. And I think he would thrive in a, uh, in a more uh, appropriate way. But uh, when I say the young talent, I'm not talking about the, 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 the young uh, players who they drafted this year. I'm not talking about uh, uh, Max Lewis or Jalen Lewis, Fino. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the Julius Randles. I'm talking about the Brandon Ingles. I'm talking about the Josh Hart's. I'm talking about the Kyle Kuzma's. I'm talking about the Avisa Zubats. I'm talking about the Jordan Clarkson's. I'm talking about the Lonzo Balls. That's what I'm talking about. And I, and I know people you know, bring up that Lonzo Ball been hurt over the past couple years. But I know this. Uh, during his first season of, of joining the Chicago Bulls, his, his presence on the team helped propel the Bulls to first place in the Eastern Conference before he got hurt. And they have not been able to adjust um, to his uh, uh, his injury since. They haven't been able to adjust. You know, they've been struggling, you know, basically, you know, kind of a, a – uh, a mid-level team, 500 team at best. But maybe he doesn't get injured if he remains on the Lakers. You just never know. But that's what they're missing. And, you know, people may say, well, you can't keep everybody because of the salary cap. Well, uh, they're having trouble maintaining uh, a roster now with the past three years. And you have your, your, your bird rights on your, your drafted players. And uh, Julius Randle uh, would not be commanding the, the salary that LeBron James uh, earns. Brandon Ingram at that time would not be been commanding the salary that Anthony Davis gets. And you have a more well-rounded roster. And, 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 and with the chemistry that they would develop by now, there's no way in the world that that team uh, would be sitting there at 500. There's no way. It's impossible. It's impossible. Uh, would they have won in 2020? No, they would not. But you would you would have saw a realistic progression and improvement on a year-to-year -year basis, to where you don't shortchange yourself, because in all actuality, the team has been operating backwards, you know, ever since uh, they took on this win-now scenario, because they they're, they're taking from themselves, letting talent go, trading people away, just uh, waving people. Um, you know, uh, giving up draft picks galore. You can't keep on doing that. And that's why they're sitting where they're sitting at right now. Uh, it, it, the root of the problem is not, it's not the head coach because if they, if they fire him, then you're going to have to bring in another coach uh, uh, midseason with about 30-some games to go. You're not going to win no championship that way. So they should put an end to this before it gets worse uh, to where – uh, uh, this franchise would be in a state of futility for a very long time. Because if you if you look at the landscape, you got so many good teams on the. You okay? Look at the Spurs. Okay, Spurs are struggling this year, with, with you know with uh, uh, rookie uh, Phenom and Victor Wembanyama, but you know he's gonna get better, and you know the Spurs gonna put players around him as as the, uh, as they move forward in the future. So the Spurs will not be, you know. 20 some games on the 500 the way they are now you know they're going to improve next year Houston's going to get better the Pelicans will make a move to get better Dallas got Luka Kyrie uh, Phoenix will still be a, a good regular season team I don't think I don't think Phoenix is going to thrive in a postseason play their bench is questionable 
That's what it all comes down to. But if you look at the top four seeds, man, it's like, and, and, and then, like I said, Sacramento is a bona fide playoff team. So when you look at it, when you look at it, and then, uh, uh, well, Golden State has probably had a run. And, and, and I know it's difficult to, you know, when you've you know, been successful for that long, the way they have, to reach the end of something like that. It's, it's difficult to uh, uh, to to accept, but th that's the nature of sports. So they have nothing to uh, uh, really feel bad about. You know, they, they've had a heck of a run, four championships, really in eight years, nine years. Um, you can't really ask no more than that. But at the end of the day, the Lakers need to put an end to this. Um, they need to move on, and and, and because what's going to happen is. The longer, see, really at this point, LeBron James, if he's going to continue playing after this year, he should go back to his home team in Cleveland and finish his career out. Because ever since he's been on the Lakers, it's been it's been a big obstruction. It's been it's it's like it's like this. It's like okay. When he when he was signed to the team, he was 34 years old already. So, so you you crossing your fingers right there, you crossing your fingers, and, and and okay, he's putting up statistics, but but he's not really playing defense on the other end. And when that happens, the rest of the team has to try to compensate from that. So now everything is overlapping, and everybody winds up playing a lot of times maybe outside of Anthony Davis winds up playing out, out of position. And that's why they're giving up so many points on a game-to-game -game basis, especially with teams with a strong guard play. And then, like I said, Houston has a, has a very talented young center in uh, uh, St. Goon. That young man can play. And he matched Anthony Davis point for point. So now the advantage that, that fans thought that the Lakers had with Anthony Davis on the team is be, it's beginning to become more offset because other teams are developing uh, that center position. That that's why Denver won the series the way they did last year versus the Lakers in the Western Conference Finals. You see what I'm saying? So now that matchup is not as one-sided as anticipated after initially acquiring uh, uh, Anthony Davis back in 2019. See the lead. The lead don't stop for nobody. The lead don't stop for nobody. Uh, just like in football. Same thing in football. You know, it's a year-to-year -year thing, and, and teams are gonna, they're gonna improve. They're gonna improve. And, and and if you're not building your team the right way, if you're trying to, you know, uh, uh you know, cut and paste a, a roster every year, that's not gonna work. That's not gonna work. Their form is not gonna work no more. Uh, the way maybe a, a, a LeBron, you know, was accustomed to when he's playing in the Eastern Conference, when he's playing out in Miami with Wade and Botch, or when he's playing with uh, Kyrie and Kevin Love back in Cleveland. That's not working no more. Like I said, these teams have got smarter, and, and, and they're building their rosters up. And now, if you notice, they're starting to develop that, that center position again. That's why the Lakers have so much trouble playing the teams like even the Sacramento. So at the end of the day, uh, like I said, I know it's a long way to go, but when they mortgage their young talent off, they essentially had a one-year window. And ever since then, it's just really been a lot of uh, uh, hype and, and talk without, for all actual purposes. The franchise mortgaged a decade off. You know, and I know people say, well, you know, the Ingrams and the Randles haven't won anything, but it's not even about what they've won on the teams they're currently on. It's about what they could have did if they'd have been allowed to stay uh, stay together and grow as a team uh, for the for the franchise who drafted them in the L.A. Lakers. And like I said, man, was was so disappointing about this and so sad about all this. We'll never know. Because what you know, a one fan to say, well, they never would have done anything. But I can come back and say, well, we'll never know because they were never given a chance. And that's the reality. That's more of a reality than trying to reach a conclusion in a, in a, a generalization saying they never would have done anything. We'll never know. We'll never know.
But we know one thing. We know this team this year is 500. And they got, what, five more games remaining on their road trip. I'm telling you, man, it's, it's a trade-off for the ages. It's a trade-off for the ages. And, 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 and like I said, Houston's going to get better. That was the conference, man. Just just the league in general. You know? So I know fans are gonna say that one year was worth it, but you know, was it really worth it? See, that's the thing. Like I said, historically, the Lakers never mortgaged their future to win, which is why they won the way they did. They invested in their future. That's why they won 10 titles in 30 years. From 1980 to 2010, they invested in their future, and they made a key, key, key move here and there. You know, a key trade of getting the Paul Gasol, but but the team was thriving when they got Paul Gasol. It wasn't like they was 500 or you know struggling to compete. No, uh, the Lakers were playing off the charts when they acquired Paul Gasol. They was a playoff team before they acquired Shaquille O'Neal. You see what I'm saying? And during the Showtime years, they didn't make no big trades. Kareem had been a staple of the franchise five years before they drafted Magic Johnson, four or five years before they drafted Magic Johnson. And then they had they drafted the Michael Coopers, the Kurt Ramis, the Jane Worthies, um, the A.C. Greens, and on and on. They built the team. That's why they won the way they did. And then it carried over to... You know, the Vlade Divax, the Elden Campbells, and then later on, the Eddie, Van, uh, Eddie Jones, the Nick Van Exels. Then they, you know, uh, 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 the drafting of Kobe Bryant, Derek Fisher. And it, so the notion that the franchise have always relied on outside players to, for the win, that's a, that is a big-time misnomer. It's a big-time misrepresentation of this franchise. You know, so now they're operating in a mode that they're not accustomed to, and that's why they're struggling. So they turned into a, a franchise where they're being led to relinquish their own drafted players to try to flip around and bring in all stars or superstars. And if they bring, if they do bring in another star player, and they don't, you know, uh, meet expectation, and that player. He's gonna be a scapegoat too, and it's gonna it's gonna go on and on and on and on and on because fans were led to believe that the team that they fielded, you know, uh, the year after the bubble was better, and they was gonna win, and they lost in the first round. Then they thought the team that represented the uh, uh, twenty one twenty two season when they brought in all the big names, the top seventy five players, the Carmelos, bringing back Dwight Howard, you know, uh, people like that. They thought that team had it in the bag and ain't even make the play in. You see? So all the player turnover just shows that that to me they went down the wrong path. And if they had stuck with their real players, they'd be in a such better position now. And then you got your draft picks and you can still draft uh talent. Draft the players that you need to move forward that you truly need and is best suited to uh, continue your success. That's what they gave up. That's what they gave up. So I didn't mean for this to be as long as it uh, has wound up being, but, uh, you know, as a fan of this team, man, you know, you see the handwriting on the wall when you really think long-term and you can see uh, the, the gaps in the team. You can see that there's always this disconnect. Uh, you can see they operate in the mode that is going to lead them to to oblivion if they don't put an end to it. That that that's really what it comes down to. That's really what it comes down to. So, once again, the Houston Rockets defeat the Lakers one thirty five to one nineteen. Sixteen points. Sixteen points. And the Lakers got two superstars on the court, and they're still losing by double figures. So it is what it is. So I just want to drop that nugget. And until next time, this is JB for BTB.
Behind the bench.